Having spent the last two years all alone and thinking he's the only remaining human on Earth, Phil meets Carol. Despite being thankful for the woman's existence, he soon grows weary of her personality. With the two agreeing that they're responsible for repopulating the Earth, Phil remains apprehensive of Carol's strict stipulations that they need to be married first before they can copulate. Phil and Carol stand at the altar of an empty church dressed in a suit and a bridal gown. She excitedly says, I do, while he says, I do, hesitantly. After the ceremony, Phil asks Carol if they had to get married since they're the last people on Earth. But she says they aren't the last two people and opens the church doors. Outside are dozens of wedding guests throwing flower petals and rice at the couple, and Phil screams. Suddenly, Phil wakes up from his nightmare and checks outside the window to see if the rest of the world is still gone and is relieved. Later, Carol comes to Phil's house with a spaghetti and raisin ball dish. He asks her if she's sure about the wedding tomorrow, and she reiterates how she doesn't want children out of wedlock. She says she'll take care of everything they need for the ceremony, and all he's responsible for is the rings. She gives him a walkie-talkie so they can contact each other while on their errands. The next day, while Carol is at the craft store getting the decorations for the wedding, Phil procrastinates getting the rings by having a bachelor party with his ball friends. He uses a flamethrower to burn a toilet paper tower, make popcorn on a trash can lid, and burn wigs on top of mannequin heads. Later, Carol calls Phil on the walkie-talkie and asks if he's gotten the rings. He says he's busy now, but she sees him burning the wigs and knows he's lying. A few minutes later, Phil visits the storefront window with the mannequin he has a crush on and tells it that he's getting married that afternoon. He says Carol isn't the one, but she's the last woman on earth, so he has no other choice. He leans in close to kiss the mannequin but stops himself. At the church, Phil presses play on a radio on the altar and Carol's pre-recorded voice for the ceremony plays. Carol walks down the aisle in a gown and Phil waits for her at the altar wearing the clothes he wore that morning. When reciting their vows, Carol speaks from her heart and delivers a beautiful message. But when it's Phil's turn, he says a short, emotionless message. The exchanging of rings starts and Phil pretends to search for them in his pocket. Pockets. Carol asks him if he got the rings, and he says he did but ultimately comes clean that he didn't. His irresponsibility hurts Carol and she leaves the church and drives away. Later, Phil goes to Carol's house and breaks down the door with a sledgehammer. Inside, he sees the decorations Carol set up for their reception and the wedding cake with a groom topper that she customized to look like him. He then sees the craft store shopping bags by the corner of the room. In the craft store, Carol is bedazzling a pillow on the floor when she hears Phil's message on the walkie-talkie. She says she doesn't want to talk to him now, but he pops out from behind a shelf and wants to speak to her. He says she might have some quirks that drive him crazy, but being with her is a lot better than living alone in his mansion. Minutes later, Phil drives her somewhere and hands her a tiny sledgehammer before he gives her his gift. Inside a jewelry store, Carol breaks a glass display case and chooses a variety of diamond rings. Shortly after, they continue the wedding ceremony in the church and share a timid kiss. That night, the couple finally consummate their marriage, and it isn't at all what Phil expected. Carol is very talkative in bed and is convinced she's very good at it. The next day, Phil is playing racquetball in the foyer when Carol walks through the front door. He thinks she'll tell him to stop doing the things he does for fun, but is surprised when she asks if she can play with him. That night, the couple makes love again, and it's just as unenjoyable for Phil. The following day, Phil takes his wife around town, and they spend the day doing the absurd things he does to pass the time, and she has a lot of fun. He then takes her to the storefront with the mannequin and tells Carol the mannequin is his ex-girlfriend. Carol steps into the store and lifts the mannequin before throwing it down on the pavement. On the ride home, Phil disregards a stop sign and unexpectedly hits a limousine. He asks if Carol is okay before getting out of the truck to check the other vehicle. Suddenly, a beautiful woman Melissa exits the limousine and asks if Phil is okay. Phil is too stunned to speak, and Melissa hears Carol calling out from the truck, and she goes to her. Melissa helps Carol out of the truck, and she says they need to get away from the vehicle as it's already begun to catch fire. Phil immediately calls shotgun and gets in the front seat without even helping his wife into the car. In the limo, Phil stares at Melissa lovingly and wants to talk to only her. She says she saw Phil's alive in Tucson signs and wished he had written his address because she's been driving around the city for two weeks. Carol mentions that she was already in the city even before her, and Phil looks regretful. Carol then says she and Phil are married, but he doesn't want the beautiful woman to know that. He tries to close the partition to keep Carol out of the conversation because he wants to be alone with Melissa. At Phil's house, Melissa asks the couple where she could live. Phil suggests his house in case she got a concussion from the crash, but Melissa says she'll choose one of the other houses in the neighborhood. He asks her to come over for dinner, and the three share an awkward hug. In the evening, Phil comes down for dinner wearing a collared shirt and pants. The women are taken aback by a shaved face and thinks he looks weird without a beard. 
At dinner, Phil fawns over Melissa, who says she used to be a real estate agent and was married to a man who cheated on her. He apologizes for crashing her limo, and she says she would have been mad if he hit her old Volkswagen bug. Carol consents Phil finds Melissa attractive but doesn't say anything. Later, Carol asks her husband if she finds Melissa attractive, but he lies and says he doesn't. That night, Phil is awakened by Melissa wearing a nightgown and wants to show him something. Then, he follows her around the house eagerly. When he enters the room she went in, he sees Carol on the toilet and screams awake from the nightmare. The next day, Melissa enters Phil's house, and he's in the foyer lifting weights without a shirt. She shows him the Volkswagen bug with a bow on her driveway, and he says he's giving it to her to replace her limo. Moments later, Carol calls Phil over and complains that he still hasn't fixed her door, and he promises he'll get right on it. Later that day, Carol shows Melissa the scrapbook she made for their wedding. Melissa asks her why she and Phil don't live in the same house, and she admits they only got married to repopulate the earth. Melissa says she was so lonely that she went to different coffee shops and purposely misspelled her name on the coffee cups. That afternoon, while Phil poorly fixes Carol's door, Melissa invites them over for some beers, and he says he'll let Carol know. That evening, Phil and Melissa drink beers on her patio, and Phil says Carol couldn't make it because she wasn't feeling well. Melissa confides that she's jealous of their marriage because she misses making love and finds it ironic that the last man on earth happens to be married. Phil thinks this is his chance with the beautiful woman and leaves to talk to Carol. In Carol's house, she's busy making a heart-shaped decoration for her door with her illustration of the two of them on it. Phil feels terrible for what he was about to say to Carol and walks out mournfully. The next day, a man in a sports car sees the Alive in Tucson sign and continues driving. That night, the three friends are drinking wine outside Phil's house. When Carol steps away, Melissa asks Phil if he mentioned their conversation to Carol and he says no. Melissa is relieved because she's embarrassed for what she said, respects their marriage, and hates cheaters. Later, Carol has too much to drink and drags her husband into the house to make love. He tells her to cut down on on the displays of affection so as not to make Melissa feel lonely about her situation. Carol says they must make as many babies as possible to repopulate the earth. Phil takes her sentiment and has an idea. The next day, Phil talks to his ball buddies at the bar. He asks them how he can convince Carol to be okay with him sleeping with Melissa and make it look like it's for the greater good. Later that day, Phil has a vague conversation with Melissa and concludes that she is open-minded and favors repopulation. In Carol's house, Phil acts upset and tells his wife that he thought about their children's future. He says he doesn't want their kids to have to repopulate the earth with each other, Carol understands his anguish and says she'll think about it. He says there's only one solution to the problem and he'll have to sleep with Melissa. This angers his wife, and he lets it slip that Melissa is a sexual deprived woman, so his wife tells him to leave. Hours later, Melissa talks to Phil and is mad that he told Carol about their conversation and dragged her into their marital problems, possibly costing her and Carol's friendship. That evening, Phil tries to make amends with both women with a dunk tank in the middle of the street they can use on him. While Phil encourages them to come out of their houses, Carol knits, and Melissa reads a magazine. Eventually, Melissa takes a bottle of wine and walks to Carol's house while ignoring Phil's grand gesture. At Carol's front door, Melissa wants them to have a truce and repair their friendship. Meanwhile, Phil gets dunked in the tank several times because of the faulty seat. His setup loses power, and the two women wish to talk to him. Later, Carol tells Phil that she and Melissa had a discussion and have reconsidered his plan of sleeping with Melissa. This is because she doesn't want her kids to have to repopulate the earth with each other. She lays down the ground rules, and he and Melissa can only sleep together three times a month and three times per day. When Melissa gets pregnant, all physical contact is to cease between them. Phil agrees to the terms and excuses himself from the room. Phil then victoriously runs back to his house, where he screams his gratitude into a pillow. The next day, Phil wears a suit and pretends he isn't aware that he's about to sleep with Melissa. That evening, Phil takes Melissa to a park where he set up a bed under the stars. Melissa remarks how romantic everything is when Carol insists it should just be for a population. Before getting to the deed, Phil plays guitar and launches fireworks. Elsewhere, the man in the sports car sees the the fireworks and drives quickly toward it. In the park, Phil takes off his shirt and kisses Melissa. Then, they see a car arrive. Phil thinks it's Carol, but a man named Todd steps out and introduces himself. Phil is annoyed that Todd interrupted his moment with Melissa, but she's happy to see another person. Todd tells them he was about to drive out of the city until he saw the fireworks. In her house, Carol is doing the laundry when Phil comes in and tells her he didn't sleep with Melissa because Todd arrived. She is elated because they can finally have a wider gene pool if Melissa has Todd's kids. But Phil thinks Melissa would never sleep with the new guy because he's unattractive. Later, the four of them have drinks outside Phil's house, and he can feel the instant connection between Melissa and Todd. He interjects every time they have a little moment and even pretends that the favorite movie they share, The Shawshank Redemption, is his favorite movie too. 
Phil then gets Todd to talk about his weight to try to get Melissa to find him unattractive, but Todd shares a touching story of his lifelong struggle with his weight, which further endears him to Melissa. The following day, Carol hatches a plan to get Melissa and Todd to go on a group outing, but then have her and Phil back out at the last minute so the two can go on a date by themselves. Phil still insists that Melissa would never go for Todd and secretly wishes she'd still sleep with him. Later that day, Phil visits Melissa and tries to start a conversation about the repopulation plan before Todd's arrival. He tries to convince her that the Shawshank Redemption is his favorite movie, but he gets busted when the post-it notes he placed on the door fall off. In Carol's house, she waits for Todd with Melissa and when he arrives, Carol pretends to be ill. She tells them they should go on the outing themselves and Phil will take care of her. Moments later, Phil arrives and is excited to go with Melissa and Todd, but because Carol is ill, he has to stay with her. Later, Phil spies on Todd and Melissa's date as they ride go-karts and play mini-golf. He convinces himself that Melissa is faking her enthusiasm. In the arcade, Phil sees Melissa and Todd starting to fall for each other and is worried increases. Outside Carol's house, Phil helps his wife with the dishes, and she tells him that Melissa asked Todd out on another date for tomorrow. Phil wants to go with them and says they need to be there to ensure everything goes to plan. The next day at the tennis court, Phil insists he and Todd be partners and should take their shirts off. Todd doesn't mind, and when he removes his shirt, Melissa sees a scar on the side of his torso. Todd says he donated his kidney to his foster brother, who ended up rejecting the kidney and passing away. Jealous, Phil tries to distract the woman from listening to Todd's story. Seconds later, Todd cries and excuses himself after talking about his foster brother, and Melissa follows him. Phil and Carol follow the two and see them kissing behind a wall. Carol is happy that her matchmaking worked and kisses Phil's neck, but he tries to avoid it. That night, Phil visits Melissa and desperately tries to break Melissa and Todd's bond by saying overweight people can't be trusted. Melissa is offended by what he said and closes the door in his face. Phil realizes his mistake and admits that Todd is a great guy and he just hasn't been around this many people in two years and is learning how to communicate properly. Properly. He mentions he used to speak to his ball friends at the bar and Melissa opens the door. Later, Phil introduces Melissa to his ball friends at the bar. She asks him what his favorite movie is and he says it's The Godfather. Melissa wants Phil to be honest with her, so he musters up his courage and confesses how he believes she's the one he's been waiting for and is falling in love with her. He asks if she thinks she could ever feel the same way, but she says no. Phil tries to save face by pretending that the speech he just gave was actually for Carol. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.